Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm here with Dave Vellante, my co-host and co-analyst. This panel is going to be really fun today. We are talking to the Snowflake challenge winners. So I would first like to introduce Stefan Williams. He is the VP Corporate Development and Snowflake Ventures at Snowflake. Welcome, Stefan. Mike Lukianoff, CEO of Signalflare IO, welcome. And Janie Strickland, Chief Customer Officer at Signalflare IO. I can't wait to talk to you about Signalflare IO, but I want to start with you, Stefan, to explain a little bit about, about the Snowflake Startup Challenge. What are you trying to do here? The Startup Challenge is an incredible opportunity for young, early stage companies who are looking to build innovative technologies around data um, to, to build that hopefully on Snowflake and, and use the, the go-to-market channel and the, and the openings that it provides, but also as a, as a platform to help stand up and accelerate innovation and, and deliver product to market. Um, and so it's been an incredible journey across a number of years now. Um, I think we've had, I think there was over a, a nearly a thousand registered applications from over a hundred different countries. Uh, so it's a truly global competition that, uh, that really does allow startups a, a, a platform and a voice to to go and uh, to speak to you know, customers and partners uh, at this summit. And what are you looking for in a winner? Um, I mean, there's, there's lots of things, and some of the judges covered it, right, around team and, and product quality. I think, um, I think for me, it's, it's to what extent is Snowflake's core underlying uh, data components being utilized, and how forward thinking are companies thinking about that as it relates to things around native applications, Snowpark container services, Streamlit. Um, so, so use of Snowflake as a core component of infrastructure and then allowing data to kind of bleed into areas of interest, whether that's on different industries uh, as, as we have here with Singleflare, but also different personas across the enterprise, right? That think about CMOs and CFOs and CROs. Like how are they, how are they able to get access to data that is in, in the enterprise in a, in a seamless experience? that some of these third-party application providers are building. So that's secret innovative sauce. Well, I would like to bring you, Mike, Luke, Mike into this conversation. Bring us back to, to when you started this company. What was the problem that you, that you saw and you wanted to solve? Um, so what we were really trying to help was using data to help people solve big, high-impact problems. So, you know, a lot of, say, data, companies are just sort of stacking data on top of data on top of data, and it's actually creating more headaches and more, more confusion than it is actually helping them make decisions. So you know, we wanted to figure out you know, how do we distill the, the, uh, the data down to actually help these companies uh, turn it into an actual decision by telling them what the consequences of the decision are going to be. In order to do that, we need to identify what are the high impact uh, uh, questions that we can answer so that in adopting the platform, we can actually identify, well, how does it actually impact the, uh, the business enough in a way that's actually going to uh, pay for itself? So let's back up here though. In terms of when you started it, it was, you, you were really inspired by what was happening to restaurants in the pandemic. And you, you, you actually had worked in restaurants earlier in your career. Tell us a little bit about what you were seeing out there. Well, going, going way back in time, uh, Janie and I both uh, were, were restaurant operators. You know, and that's going back to the 90s for me. <laughs> <laughs> I want, <yeah>. It's okay. <laughs> um, but then I then I worked in startups and data startups in the restaurant industry for I mean this is for me it's gone back 25 years, um, focused on pricing solutions and data solutions within restaurants. Um, I actually exited from my last company uh, in I think 2017 2018, uh, and going into the pandemic, a lot of the models that I had built, as I think a lot of people experienced. They just didn't work anymore because you needed some period of stable demand in order to make a lot of these models that you know that used to work work. So we had to go back to the drawing board uh, and figure out a new way of you know looking at the data and working with the data. So we started pulling in different kinds of data sets, you know, mobile data and credit card data and local economic data to really get at the root of what drives the demand for restaurants before we start pulling in uh, point of sale data. 
So we really turned the, some of the models completely uh, upside down. Um, and in doing that, we also had to look at a completely different data stack. And when I started working with Snowflake, you know, I hadn't personally done a lot of coding and, and, uh, and data work myself. You know, at that point, I, I, had, I had had a lot of, you know, I'd been working <laughs> at my own team for a little while. And when I started doing it myself, I was just floored by how easy Snowflake made it. And the model started working better and moving the data and our ability to clean the data and, and blend so many different data sources. It was so much easier than it was when I started my company you know, some you know, dozen years before. And that's when it really dawned on me that you know, times have, have changed so much and you know, what Snowflake was doing was really shifting the entire market. And that was going to open up the door for us to be able to take some of the things that we were doing to you know, completely different, um, a completely different customer and be able to scale it in a way that, and answer questions that we just w weren't able to before. So Janie, you are, you get a call from your old colleague Mike who says, you know, I've been doing some coding and I've got this idea. You, you were intrigued. Tell us a little bit about what brought you to SignalFlare.io, AI. Sure. <clears throat> so I've actually, <clears throat> I, I've worked with Mike before, uh, many years, and uh, in the data science and the pricing world. So I already had some exposure to his, to, we, we were, had already had some, uh, very successful times together. And uh, my job had been disrupted at the time too due to uh, the COVID situation. And Mike reached out and said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some work for brand A and I'm actually doing my own coding. And you know, this new mobile data is really giving us a new edge on how we can bring the external demand into the equation to help enrich the models of pricing that we've been working on for decades, do you want to join me? I'm like, well, if you're doing your own coding, and there must be something about Snowflake, and now we have additional data sets that Snowflake helps us manage in a more efficient manner, we can spread this to brands of all sizes. Like, we can go down market, which is really who needs this most, right? The smaller brands, emerging brands, even mid-sized brands in their own development journey. You know, pricing, it, it's a make or break thing. Like, if you do it well, you know, everybody gets a raise. If you do it poorly, you know, and it's hard to retract. Um, so we really, uh, helping these smaller brands, emer emerging brands, medium-sized brands, helping them sort of not get out over their skis, like it's a really important time for them to price right. Particularly in this inflation inflationary environment, when, when shoppers are more bu budget conscious. Yes. Uh, I mean, we have seen, what did we calculate? Like, 30% over the last two years, a 30% price increase across really all segments. Um, that's really I just kind of mind boggling. Now the past couple of years there was a lot more happening. Nowadays that's more moderate, but um, yeah, pricing is not just cost, it's about the whole value equation, right? It underscores the whole value equation. So we bring in um, yeah, certainly the customer external demand pieces, we're bringing in customer satisfaction, um, yeah, other factors that are part of the equation. There's all new channels, like consumers, you probably know yourself, like, do you order delivery sometime? Do you just want to get food? I want to go out and have a, you know, a nice experience with a colleague, the family. Like, so there's, uh, restaurants are providing experiences in all different ways, but these new channels, these external channels, are adding even another dimension to the price conversation. So how, what has the feedback been from the customers that you're working with in terms of how SignalFlare AI is changing the way they, as you said, deliver experiences to customers? So they, they are looking for, we like to say they're looking for a good night's sleep. Pricing in, in the restaurant industry, you don't get many of those. <laughs> That's very hard to find, right? Um, pricing decision is, it's very challenging, right? And it's, it's, it can be daunting. And we want to help those business leaders get to the decision line with more wisdom and confidence. So as Mike said earlier, we're actually presenting them with scenarios of the possibilities of what could happen if you take course A, B, or C. And then they can decide, you know, what's their risk tolerance? And they choose the option that's, that works best for them. Um, so I think that's something that, for them, they're like, oh, I have a lot more confidence. 
Uh, they want to know how the sausage is made, so we spend a lot of time. Part of it is even an education of you know, what matters, what's important to your business, uh, listening to them, but here's what matters in the pricing equation. And then, uh, yeah, we certainly weigh in on what our recommendation, what, our, what, what we think they should do, but um, so really it's a confidence factor. But one of the things that we're, we're really excited about, especially with, you know, with where Snowflake is going, is, is all the different kinds of apps and native apps that can be, that can be uh, delivered. So you know, our, we have a recommendation engine, but then we also are able to now you know, start delivering that directly to the restaurant. So with the smaller uh, types of restaurants, being able to deliver the, you know, the, the apps that go directly into, uh, go directly to the restaurants, we're also working with uh, point of sale uh, register companies so that we can actually push the right prices directly to the registers. And when we work with the large enterprises, we can work with uh, Snowflake data shares so that they can just bypass everything and we can just push it right into their uh, data, uh, data warehouse so that they don't, you know, so that we're just running the models and then it pushes directly into their, into their data warehouse so that they can handle it within their own systems. It may be just, so this is incredible to see what you guys are saying at Signalflare, but also when Maxa came up and actually just before the announcement was made that you guys won, they kind of say the similar thing in that um, by building on a platform like Snowflake, that the ability to move quickly and deliver real value to customers by standing on the infrastructure that we have is, 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 has been incredible for them. And then the, the channel that it allows them to go and sell into much bigger customers because of the friction that's taken out of data movement. And then you add to that things like the marketplace where you have, you know, um, data products now that you can actually augment your own applications with to drive additional value, it starts to really become a differentiator when you're powered on top of Snowflake because of the, 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 the infrastructure that you can stand on, the, the, the friction that's taken out of the sales process and the actual data that you're getting is, a, is, is, is really impactful to the business. So it's great to hear you say that because I was here last year with the Maxa guys and they were kind of saying something similar and, and you know, a year on they've just done a uh, a, a significant Series A raise, and they're off to the races with, uh, with I think, meaningful revenue growth, which is, is great. And, and, that's, and that's what it all comes down to, right, is getting rid of that friction, and especially when you're working with, you know, with customers, it, it works at, in, at the enterprise level, but also with you know, smaller groups that might not have the technical savvy, right, and they're trying to figure out how to get better access to their data, and if they don't have to work with lots of different APIs and yep. the data moving around, you set them up in Snowflake and get the data shares. And, and now we're working on setting up uh, Snowflake clean rooms so that, that we can also set up and work with their PII data without having to get any of that. They can mask all the data, integrate that into the, into the analysis yep. so that we can get also customer specific, right? So the whole world is changing before That's our eyes. Point. I love that point. The, the, the data clean room piece is actually really important because now you're not, only, you're not only getting access to data that's, you know, third party data that's, you know, normal data that everyone can get access to. You can actually now set up data clean rooms between one or multiple parties and actually retain analytical integrity of that data without exposing the PIO, which you're like, which you're just saying. And so now if you're powered on top of Snowflake, using the platform, you're actually having a unique data differentiator in delivering that solution that actually can serve as a wedge to get in and actually you know, deliver value. So I love right. that you said that, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to steal Sign Signalflare AI's thunder, but there were two other great finalists, so I want to give them a shout out, Big Geo and Scientific Financial Systems. Do you want to tell our viewers a little bit about each of those companies too? Um, no, I think you know, as it relates to the, what Snowflake can offer in, in terms of a platform and how that gets bled into different industries, I think Big Geo, as it relates to geospatial data, uh, I did, did an incredible job um, in extending the platform and, 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 and in using some of the innovative features around native apps. Um, and then uh, scientific, the, the financial. scientific financial, they have the, uh, the asset management platform, so they're going to disrupt how, how uh, analysts, how financial analysts are able to, to, to use data to drive business and investment decisions. So, I mean, that was just two. We had, again, we had nearly a thousand applicants across every single industry you can imagine, and I think that's really the power of it. Once you can have the data kind of consistently in, in, a, in a common underlying horizontal infrastructure like Snowflake, the ability to go and unlock the value across these different industries and now entrepreneurs like Signalflare and, and the thousands of others to come onto the platform and really drive that value is, for me as, 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 a, as a Snowflake Venture you know, member, I feel like it's, it's a super exciting opportunity 
with this native app framework that we've got going. So, so Mike and Ginny, I want to give let you have the, the last word here because it, it really is a moment for both of you in your careers. Um, particularly, you had just exited from your company. You're kicking around, looking for projects to dig in on. You had a pandemic job issue, and 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 now here you are as these as the Snowflake Challenge winners. What does it mean for you at this point in your career, in your professional life, but also what does it mean for Signal Flare's next moves? Jaden, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I think, what does this mean at this moment in time? It's, a, it's like a breath of fresh air or like a, a release. As you can imagine, um, you know, startup world is, is, is gritty and it's tough and you're wearing a lot of hats and, you know, this is, it, for me, I'm like taking a breath, like wow, uh, this is going to be a trajectory, like we're going to springboard to who knows where. I mean, we think we know where, but <laughs> we, there's probably things we haven't even thought of yet. So professionally, I think just being seen and the hard work that we're doing, this business, pricing is like the hub and spoke. Sometimes you don't have the opportunity to make a take a price change. There are other adjacent things that we can activate. So I don't just I guess being seen in terms of that that we are a pricing provider, but we're much more than that. Excited to see where this takes us. Indeed, Mike. Uh, yeah, you know when when I started working with, with with data, like people weren't really working with data. You know, they're kind of like, oh, are you a researcher? It's like, no, I'm not a, a researcher. You know, I'm I'm pulling point of sale data out of registers and trying to understand behavior. You know, and who are you doing it for? Restaurants? It's like. So your restaurant technology? Well, no, not really. Yeah. Nobody really understood what I was doing. There wasn't even, this was even before the word data scientist came up, which I thought was kind of weird. It's like, are there scientists who don't use data? Yeah, <laughs> yeah good point, <laughs> good point, yeah. And you know, so you know, it's been sort of, and even when we applied for the, you know, for, you know, for the challenge, we're kind of like, yeah, restaurant technology and data, you know. Are they going to buy not? it? You know, yeah, we'll yeah, give it a yeah. shot. You know, what, what are the chances of us winning? But, um, you know, it's a huge validation. You know, it's been a long, it's been a long career, and you know, we're really proud of what we're doing. Really proud of the team, and uh, you know, just 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 being here was a win for us. And to win is just sort of uh, mind-boggling for us. So, you know, we're we're really excited and really proud of the team. Any hints on what's next for Signal Flare IO? AI? <laughs> well, I, I think what's really exciting for us is that you know, look, we I set up the <laughs> I set things up, you know, I've been through a few startups before. Um, we set things up, you know, not taking really any outside capital, so we're in a really good position. Um, but now we need to really get ready for growth, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and we're ready to do that because, you know, I don't want to be uh, what slows us down. So, you know, we're, uh, we've got more inbound uh, requests for what we're doing than, uh, and we can keep pace with right now, which is also a good, a good place sign. to be in. Indeed, indeed. So we got to start, you know, developing and marketing and selling, and you know, we need to we need to speed up. So it's an exciting place to be. And I think what it's what it's going to mean for the industry too, like this industry really needs this technology, and uh, you know that with tech with we're also Snowflake fans, so we talk about it, talk about you all the time with our clients. But I think just being able to help people, empower them to make their own decisions around whatever you know, is the burning question at the time, that's really powerful. Indeed. Yeah, and just building on that, you know, this, this week and seeing what Snowflake is doing with, with enterprise AI, you know, AI has been, become a, you know, a buzzword in a lot of ways. And you know, we've had machine learning under the hood for, for a really long time. So you know, I even shy away from it just because people just think you're, you're talking the book or whatever. But enterprise AI is changing things. It's going to change things because it's really harnessing all of it and, and making it work in practical situations, right? And all of the sessions that I've attended this week now, I'm looking at how we've built all of our models and it's actually built for us, right? So that we can actually bring it all together, make it more efficient, you know, harness the power that's out there, you know, and, and, and actually you know, use it in, in practical situations, not just to say I've got AI you know, under the hood, right? So I'm really excited about what, what Snowflake is doing and, and how it's going to superpower what we've already got going. Excellent, well I wish you the best of luck. Really, a really great story. Mike, Janie, Stefan, thank you both so much. Thank you all so much for coming on theCUBE.
Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.